This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. We'll start with the problem, uh, which is related to metal carbonyl complexes. And after that, there will be discussion related to application of coordination compounds and what are their importance. And then we'll discuss some problems, which is based on uh, the whole chapter, fine. So here the problem is saying, EN of Fe in this complex, Fe2, CO, whole, A, whole 9. Options are 35, 36, 37, and in the last option it is mentioned that it is it cannot be calculated. Now to find out the EN of this complex, you have to know what is its structure, because if structure is not known, then if you do not know how many carbon monoxide are acting as bridging, how many carbon monoxide are acting as terminal ligand, if we do not know that, then we cannot find out the actual EN value. So that should be known properly. Then only we can calculate the effective atomic number. So this is the structure of this complex. There is no metal-metal bond, but if we focus on a single Fe, it is connected to 3CO, and these 3CO are basically terminal. But there are also three bridging CO. Now, if we focus only on one metal, because when you are calculating EAN, just one metal you have to consider, fine? So three terminal CO for each Fe, it will be donating two electrons. That is for terminal CO. CO when it is terminal, it is donating two electrons. CO when bridging, it is donating only one electron per Fe. Okay, that means total number of terminal is three. Total number of bridging, that is also 3. So what you are getting, you are getting 6 and 3. That means 6 plus 3, it is 9 electron. And for Fe, if we consider its atomic number, that is 26. So how to calculate EAN? EAN is basically, first you write the atomic number of the metal. Then you have to check whether there is any oxidation state or not. But here CO is neutral ligand. And we do not have any other ligand. So that is a here oxidation state is zero. So you don't have to subtract any number. And total electrons that are coming from ligand, that is nine. So this is 35. Correct option will be option A. Okay. And it is not asking whether it is following the EN or not. It is just asking to find out the effective atomic number. And that is 35. Okay. And if you are uh, doing the calculation in another way. Suppose if you are just focusing on the number of valence electron for iron, then it is having configuration after argon 3d6 4s2. Okay, that means now it is 6 and 2, 8. So 8 for metal and 9 is coming from ligand. So now you are getting 17. But in this way, if you solve this, you will not be getting the actual answer because. If we want to find out the EAN, look at these values. It is all near 36. That means it must be the calculation when you will do, you have to consider the atomic number. If you consider the valence electron, you will not get the proper result. Now, this type of calculation you can do, that is where you consider only the uh, valence electron, that you can do for those questions where it is asking, that whether it is obeying the EAN rule or not. So suppose if the question is in different format, if it is asking that whether this particular complex of iron it is following EAN or not, then your answer from this calculation, it will be no, it, it is not following because it is not equal to 18, which is atomic number of argon. So that in that case, it is fine. But when you are looking at the options, you are seeing 35, 30, 37, obviously you have to follow the previous method. Okay, next question. Here we have a complex cobalt and it is bimetallic complex, two cobalt and there are a total eight carbon monoxide. Now it is displaying metal-metal bond, then terminal CO bond or bridging CO bond and what are the corresponding numbers that we have to check. So the first one is metal-metal bond. So only one metal-metal bond Terminal CO bond, that means metal is connected to terminal CO, that is 2, and bridging is 4. So it is 1, 2, and 4. Then the option B, it is 1, 6, and 2. 
then option c it is zero four terminal co zero co co bond that means you do not have any metal metal bond four bridging co and the last one again zero this is six this is four now this particular complex in last class we have seen that it remains in two structures and there is basically equilibrium but remember the equilibrium is more towards the right hand side so if it is structure one if it is structure two two is basically uh, it's it remain in higher percentage which is clear from this sign because see this arrow is longer so it remains mostly in the right hand side now just if you uh, consider individually the complexes you will see there is one metal metal bond in the first complex one metal metal bond there is how many uh, terminal co bond four metal co terminal bond and zero metal co bridging because there is no bridge co fine so this is for the first complex and for the second one here also we have one metal metal then we have three metal carbonyl terminal and two metal co bridging okay actually it will be multiplied by two because both the metals you have to consider so it is basically one then six and then two not three because it will be multiplied by two now if we consider the first one here also it is basically eight if you consider the first one one eight zero it is not matching with any of the options and also it should not be because this is less predominating structure but if you consider the second one metal metal bond one terminal carbonyl metal six and bridging co metal bond two so one six two it is matching with this option so that is why second option will be the correct option okay next importance and application of coordination compounds transition metals have the special property of forming coordination compounds so this is a completely different types of compounds that we have seen in this whole chapter because it has a specific kind of bond which is coordinate bond fine now it is observed only for transition metals because of its special property which is high charge to mass ratio that means charge by mass ratio this value when it becomes very high then and another reason is availability of d electrons so because of these reasons it can form coordination compounds now the advances in this chemistry it provides various complex compounds that we can use in different areas of our life so for example medicinal science mining analytical chemistry metallurgy biological system etc so you can understand how versatile uh, are its applications so that is why these compounds are so much important and uh, there is a specific chapter for these compounds right so transition metals only uh, can form coordination complexes because of their high charge to mass ratio and also the availability of d orbital so because of the presence of this Uh, d orbitals uh, ligands can donate electron to d orbitals and also there is bond formation possible between the metal d orbitals and the ligand orbital one by one we'll see the applications the first one is application in biological system fine chlorophyll we all have heard this name it is a green pigment which is present in green plants and algae it contains magnesium 2 plus cation as the central metal ion and this is surrounded by some ligands and these ligands are known as porphyrin ligands these are very uh, large cyclic complex structure details you don't need to know uh, don't need to know and porphyrin ligands there are different forms and in this particular case that is chlorophyll here the ligand is known as porphyrin right it plays important role in photosynthesis and this process is very important because by this process only plant can convert carbon dioxide 
and water into important compound carbohydrates and oxygen. So we uh, get oxygen from this process. And this is this process is possible because of this chlorophyll and it contains Mg2 plus. That means chlorophyll, it is also a kind of coordination compound. Okay. Next important compound, hemoglobin, the red pigment of blood. It acts as oxygen carrier and hemoglobin contains which one? It contains iron. Next important, vitamin B12. Vitamin B12, normally in vitamin, if we look at the structure, there is no metal ion. But this is a very special case. It is the only vitamin that consists metal ion. Fine. And from the name, that is vitamin B12, which has another name, cyanocobalamin. From the name, it is clear which metal is actually present. So it is containing cobalt plus, And it is also surrounded by porphyrin type of ligand, which we have already seen in case of chlorophyll. Next, many enzymes uh, are metal complexes. So enzymes are basically biological catalysts, right? It contains metal inside its structure and they can regulate different biological processes. So here we have one particular example, which is carboxypeptidase. So this is protease enzyme and its application is, it is hydrolytic enzyme, okay? It helps in digestion. And the most important thing is it contains which ion? It contains zinc 2 plus ion. And here the ligand is basically protein. So protein uh, is surrounding Zn2 plus or you can say Zn2 plus is coordinated to the protein. So these are different examples under biological system. Next, photography. So in photography, When the developed film is washed with sodium thiosulfate solution, now, sodium thiosulfate solution is uh, known as hypo or its formula is Na2H2O3, sodium thiosulfate. Thiosulfate is H2O3 2 minus. So when we, it is washed with this uh, solution, what happens? The negative film gets fixed. So in this process, the undecomposed silver bromide that is present in the film, that forms a soluble complex with this sodium thiosulfate. And as it is forming soluble complex like this, Na3, Ag, H2O3, O2, so it can be easily washed with water. So the complex that is formed between Ag and Na2H2O3, that is actually the coordination complex. The name is sodium thiosulfato argentate 1 because their oxidation state is of silver is 1. It can be easily removed by washing the film with water and this is possible because it is water soluble. Otherwise, we cannot wash it with water. So this is the application in photography. Medicinal chemistry. Many complexes are used as medicine for the treatment of different types of disease. Now, there is a growing interest in the use of chelate therapy in medicinal chemistry. Remember, there is a particular slide we have discussed which is based on a chelate effect. So, for those ligands where at least two donating site is present, that is, it must be bidented. Monodented will not work. So, minimum bidented, if it is tri or tetra, then also fine. Because only when there is more than one donating site, it can form a ring with the metal. And this is known as chelation. So when chelate type of ring is formed, then the complex is very stable because of entropy effect, which is already discussed in detail. So because of this stability that is observed in case of uh, where chelation is actually occurring, so because of this formation of this stable complex, now we can apply this uh, for the uh, medicinal purpose. And how we are doing this? So suppose we have taken calcium EDTA complex. So EDTA is hexa coordinated. So obviously it will be forming a chelate ring. So this calcium EDTA complex, it is used for the treatment of lead and radioactive poison. So there may be some radioactive metals uh, if by chance that is present inside the body that must be removed with the help of some medicine. And the medicine is containing CA EDTA. Okay. So what will happen now the EDTA it will leave CA and it will now combine with lead or other radioactive metal ions. 
and it will form complex or that is chelate complex with these metal ions and these metal ions are basically undesired we want to remove it from the body so if edta is complex com edta is forming more stable complex with these ions compared to calcium so obviously now the complex is uh, more stable so it is as if substitution of ca by the other metals which metals those are unwanted that you want to remove from the body okay so in this way uh, when it is forming stable complex and it can be removed from the body okay so this is the principle based on which it, this type of medicine is actually working then cis platin cis platin is uh, platinum uh, complex which is square planar complex it is used uh, as anti tumor drug in cancer treatment so these two are examples under medicinal chemistry catalyst coordination complex they can be used as catalyst many of these complexes are used in as catalyst in both organic chemistry as well as inorganic fine so for example if you consider in organic chemistry hydrogenation of alkene that means you have any cc double bond and you are adding hydrogen and you are getting saturated compound that is from alkene now you will get alkene now in this case wilkinson catalyst it is example which is having structure pph3 whole 3 rhcl that means here rhodium is the metal which is attached with one chloride ion and three triphosphine uh, sorry triphenylphosphine ligand and this is a tetra coordinate so this is a catalyst wilkinson catalyst which is used for hydrogenation of unsaturated compounds then ziegler natta catalyst which is basically combination of tiCl4 and triethyl aluminum that is alet3 now this is used for polymerization of ether so the first one it is uh, applied in hydrogenation the second one it is applied in polymerization so this type of question is also common if it is asked that suppose uh, three to four names of the different compounds will be given and it will be asked among these which can be used for uh, as catalyst in the polymerization like this type of question you may get okay so then the answer will be ziegler natta catalyst measurement of hardness of water so if we want to know the hardness of water we basically have to know the amount of calcium 2 plus ion and magnesium 2 plus ion that is present in the water okay now if we do titration of the water that is the sample of water for which you want to know the hardness or would you want to measure the hardness so this sample is containing some calcium 2 plus and mg 2 plus now if you are doing the titration with sodium uh, complex of edta then there will be replacement of sodium with calcium and mg so now edta it will leave na and it will combine with ca and mg because the complexes are more stable now selective estimation of these ions is also possible selective means suppose you have presence of both ca2 plus and mg2 plus and out of these two edta will make complex only with one metal and why it is so because of its selectivity property and why it is selective because calcium edta complex and mg edta complex it is it may be that their stability constant is not same so if stability constant is high for some particular complex obviously that will be formed first and then the second one will be formed okay so because of this selective estimation of this ions uh, selectivity of this reaction between ca and edta and mg and edta selective estimation is also possible and that is because of the difference in the value of stability constant okay next is qualitative and quantitative chemical analysis both qualitative and quantitative the familiar color reactions that are given by metal ions with a number of ligands especially chelating ligands so we know what is chelating ligands and mostly when they form a complex with metal ions there is a specific color generation now it is because of the uh, coordination entities okay now this is the basis for their detection so suppose you are adding any particular ligand suppose you are adding edta ligand or uh, dimethyl glyoximate ligand dmg in short and there are different ions three to four ions so dmg 
suppose if it is com making complex with a particular ion and there is a specific color so color will not be same with other metals so from this specific color you can understand which uh, metal ion is actually present right so this is qualitative but quantitative estimation that is also possible so suppose if dmg or edta is making a one is to one complex with the metal so for simplicity i am saying one is to one it may be one is to two or three that means you the amount of ligand that you are getting you know its amount concentration is known now after complex formation when you are checking the uh, amount of the complex so as you know the amount of ligand that you have added so obviously now from the weight of edta metal complex you will be able to understand what is the amount of metal that is present so in this way quantitative analysis is also possible so both qualitative uh, qualitative is possible from the color specific color and quantitative that is also possible because it is reacting in a particular ratio okay so both are possible next application in metallurgy and this complex ions possess a specific property of selective precipitation and solubility okay so because of this uh, that is based on this observation we can use them in the separation of metals so suppose there are a mixture of two metals you have metal 1 metal 2 and then you are adding a particular ligand to it so it may be that the ligand is making complex only with one metal because of its more stability or another thing may be you have a metal and you are adding another metal ligand complex now this metal is different so there may be exchange of ligand uh, metal so now m prime l you have added but now you are getting the exchanged uh, new complex which is m l so because of all these properties we can use them in metallurgy also because metallurgy is all about metal extraction from its core here we have example important extraction process of metals that is silver and gold what we use we use this complex formation property gold for example it combines with cyanide ion in the presence of oxygen and water and it forms this type of coordination entity or coordination sphere so this is uh, anionic uh, coordination compound okay in aqueous solution now gold may be separated in metallic form from this solution by the addition of zn now when you are adding zn to it what will happen now zn will replace gold so gold will be removed in the form in reduced form and zn will be oxidized so now what you are getting zn is taking the place of gold and gold you are getting in the metallic form that means you are getting now gold zero which is extraction of metal so in this way gold can be separated so this is uh, what principle we are following this principle where one metal is exchanged by another metal the next example purification of nickel nickel by mons process now in this process what we do uh, we treat this nickel with carbon monoxide suppose you have nickel sample but it is impure there is a impurity but when nickel is treated with carbon monoxide this type of nickel tetra carbonyl complex will be produced now co will not interact with the other remaining impurities so in this way now nickel is separated in the form of nickel carbonyl complex and further if you are heating it or some other processes are there by which you can decompose it and finally after decomposition the nickel that you will get that is almost 100% pure so in metallurgy in this way we can uh, see the application of coordination complexes now this question it is also based on this application it is assertion reason type of question it is saying that toxic metal ions the first statement toxic metal ions are removed by chelating ligands now this is true that we have already seen remember we use some medicine which is cadta and it can remove from our body some undesired metal ions such as slate so this is true now the reason another statement 
it is saying that Gillette complexes tend to be more stable. Now compared to complex with monodentate ligand, when we have ring formation, and ring formation when possible, at least two donating sites must be present. So Gillette complexes compared to monodentate ligand complexes, they are more stable. And that is why when we uh, want to remove the undesired metal ions, that is toxic metal ions from the body, we use this type of ligands because they are corresponding complexes more stable compared to monodentate. So the reason that is given, this statement is also correct. And not just correct, it is a correct explanation of the assertion because chelate complexes are more stable. So that is why during the removal of toxic metal ions, we use this chelating ligand. So that is why the first option will be the correct option. Both statements are true. And the second statement is the correct explanation of the first statement. Okay. Here we have two columns. In the first column, there are some coordination compounds. Their names are given total four A, B, C, D. And in column two, some metal ions are mentioned. Total five metal ions are mentioned. So you have to match them. That means these coordination compounds, all of them are containing some of the, uh, that is at least one metal. So you have to match. Now chlorophyll, uh, remember in the application part, we have seen that it contains Mg2+. plus. That means A is matching with 5. Then blood pigment, that is the red color, it is because of the iron. So B is matching with 4, that is iron. Wilkinson catalyst. Wilkinson catalyst, it is containing rhodium, which is used for hydrogenation of alkene. So this is matching with 1 and vitamin b12 it contains over so here one metal is extra which is calcium it is uh, not matching with any of this so a b c d they are matching with five four one and two respectively now one thing is very interesting here if you are sure about that chlorophyll contains mg so based on this information that is a is matching with five you can easily choose that first option is the correct option because only in first option A is matching with 5 that is mentioned because in other option C, A3, A4, A3 again. So it is a type of trick you can say. So be always very careful. If you are lagging in time in this way, you can easily choose the correct option. You don't have to look at the other options. So in the previous one, first one is correct. Simplified adsorption spectra of three complexes, one, two, and three. This is one, this is two, this is three. All are having same metal, only the ligand is different. And which metal is M? M is manganese two plus metal. This is the metal. Their lambda max values are marked as A, B, C. But it is not said that whether A is 1 or B is 2. No, it is not like that. It is simply mentioned in this picture that you can see in the right hand side. Where absorption is in Y axis and lambda value in nanometer. That is in the X axis. Okay. Now we have to match this. That is the correct match between the complexes and their lambda max values. That is just consider the first complex which is manganese NCS complex. Total 6 NCS attached to MN2 plus, and why the charge is like that? Sorry, it will be MN plus, not in it is not manganese actually, it is MN plus. Okay, that is N plus is the oxidation state. So in the first case, the metal is attached with what type of ligand? It is NCS ligand. Then fluoride ligand. And the last one, neutral ligand, ammonia. Fine. Now here, as it is anionic ligand, each of these NCS containing minus one. So that is why minus six, that will come from these ligands and it is having oxidation state plus N. So minus six plus N, 
the remaining charge that will be present outside but here you don't have to uh, be so much focused on the charge because it, it has nothing to do with charge you just have to consider what type of ligands are here present because the lambda value that is completely dependent on the nature of the ligand fine and remember lambda is inversely proportional to energy and energy means del o value now if we consider a spectrochemical series in spectrochemical series we can get the idea which ligand is more uh, strong towards strong field side which ligand is towards weak field side so if we can arrange these three ligands ammonia ncs and fluoride according to their strength then you can easily find the correct answer so stronger the ligand greater is the splitting of d orbitals that means del o value will be very high and all these are octahedral complex so del o we can say and smaller will be wavelength of light absorbed so when del o is very high lambda is low because these two are inversely related right now according to spectrochemical series maximum strength is for ammonia then ncs then fluoride okay that means if the delo order we consider maximum delo will be for ammonia it means what lambda for ammonia that will be minimum so see here minimum lambda that is actually for ammonia maximum lambda that is for fluoride and this is in between okay now ammonia is present in which complex it is third ncs is the mid, uh, first one and f is number 2 now number 2 that will have maximum wavelength so wavelength for 2 that is maximum then wavelength for 1 and at last the minimum wavelength that means maximum energy that is for 3 3 means ammonia that means a b c this is 3 this is 1 this is 2 okay 3 1 2 and this is matching with this one option 2 fine so in this way we can uh, match it and here also see only in option 2 a is matching with 3 that is also another important observation so based on this also you can choose the correct option which of the given statements is not true for the following reaction so what's happening in this reaction you have copper aqueous complex cuh2o whole 42 plus it is uh, now treated with ammonia so all the four water molecules now replaced by ammonia and mo water molecules are given now based on this reaction there are total four statement only one of these four statement will be incorrect and that incorrect you have to choose so the first two statement see it is very easy to understand that they are actually true this is ligand substitution reaction so obviously it is true there is no down heating water is replaced by ammonia okay next is ammonia is relatively strong field ligand compared to h2 this is also true fine and uh, now c and d these two not directly you can understand whether it is uh, correct or not so you have to go to details so what details we have here the first two that is uh, water ligand is replaced by ammonia this is ligand substitution this is true ammonia is relatively strong this is also true now as in the third case water is uh, replaced by ammonia so this is ligand exchange reaction that is fine and it is also true that weak field ligand is now replaced by strong field ligand and here it is mentioned that there is a change in color from light blue to dark blue that mean when it is water then it is light blue and this is dark blue fine now look at this color copper water complex it is light blue and when it is replaced by ammonia basically here it is mentioned 4 but if you are thinking why it is 4 here so whether it is 4 or 6 it 
shows this type of color and you can consider here as if only four water molecules are replaced by four ammonia rest of the two water as it is there so this is absorbing red light and this is absorbing yellow light now red light absorption means what it is somewhere here that is it may be any of this range but suppose if it is here more or less somewhere here it will be fine and the range is 640 to 700 so if it is absorbing red light that means corresponding color it will be somewhere here the opposite side and if it is absorbing yellow light now see yellow light means now the range uh, of the lambda value it is increasing as you are moving anti clockwise the lambda value is decreasing that means when you are having the amine complex it is absorbing yellow light that means it is absorbing low wavelength and low wavelength absorption means what it is actually high energy and the corresponding color it will be somewhere here that is dark blue this is light okay that means when uh, this weak field ligand it is exchanged by strong field ligand now we are shifting that is the absorption of the color is from red to yellow and that is why now it is shifting from light blue to green so this statement is also correct now if you are sure about this you can easily choose that the last option will be incorrect but why the last option is incorrect that is important and sometimes it may be that see here it is mentioned that uh, it is tetrahedral and paramagnetic that means two informations are given related to copper amine complex now it also may be that it is partially correct but even if it is partially correct you cannot say that it is fully correct so that is why you can say that it is incorrect but we will see why it is incorrect copper is having oxidation state 2 plus and copper when it is neutral it is having configuration after argon 3d10 4s1 that means when it is in 2 plus state it will have configuration 3d9 now 3d9 if we arrange the electrons in 3d that is 5d orbital it is pair okay so this is 3d then we have 4s and 4p now at a first glance it seems that there is only one unpaired electron and also from the configuration it seems as if it is sp3 hybridized so it is also true but actually it is not so simple remember this particular complex it is actually exceptional case cu nh3 whole for 2 plus normally what we do uh, what we know when it is four coordinated complex it is either tetrahedral or square plane, right and the corresponding hybridization that is either sp3 if it is tetrahedral and if it is square plane, it is dsp2 we only know these two hybridization for coordination number 4 but this is a special case and this is also discussed in detail you can uh, check that particular slide and here what happens if it is uh, that is sp3 hybridization then it is tetrahedral but actually it is observed that it is square plane but it is, if it is square plane then it must be dsp2 according to our knowledge but if it is dsp2 then this electron must be transferred to p then only we are getting this d then s and 2p but if the electron is here what happens now it is very high energy electron and high energy electron can be lost very easily and if it is lost very easily that means now copper 2 it will be converted to copper 3 but that is not observed experimentally so it is a proof that the electron is not residing in this high energy orbital like p so dsp2 hybridization not possible though it is square plane but dsp2 hybridization is not correct so the actual hybridization is sp2d but this d is not 3d this is 4d okay now if we consider 4d orbital i'm just writing one 4d orbital what happens now 1s 2p and 1d so that is why now we have not say, we are not saying dsp2 
because if it is 3D, then you can see, then you can say DSP2 because D is coming first, then S, then P. But now it is S first, then these two P. I avoid this and then 4D. So that is it is SP2D. This will remain vacant and the single electron that will remain in 3D. So that is it is not high energy electron. It is not lost easily. Okay. And this is paramagnetic. So this last statement, this is actually partially true. Only the this part is correct that it is paramagnetic because it is having one single electron. But it is not tetrad. Okay. It is also not DSP2. It is SP2D and square. So that is why the last statement as it is partially correct. So it is not true and this will be the correct option. Okay. Which of the following names are not correct? Here we have total four complexes and the corresponding names are given. Among these uh, four, some of them are not correct because see it is mentioned names are not correct. So it may be more than one. The first one, copper is attached with one water, one ammonia, and outside there is two bromo, that is bromide. And the name is amino aquo dibromo copper. So inside the coordination sphere, the ligands that you have, you only do, write those ligands before the name of copper. But see here, even this bromo is also mentioned before metal which is not correct and this bromo it is outside the coordination sphere and it is not bromo actually it is bromide it is stabilizing and uh, that is sorry it is actually the counter the two positive charge that is present that is nullified by this bromo so this is not present inside the coordination sphere so you cannot write dibromo here it will be after metal and the correct name will be amino quo that is fine then copper and after that it is uh, it will be ending that is it will end the name with bromide so dibromo is not correct and another also important thing that is not correct here is the oxidation state of copper because water and ammonia these two are neutral but bromine is not neutral and two bromine uh, br minus there that means two positive charge must be there so it is having oxidation state too so not just dibromo, this first option, it has so many errors. So this cannot be the correct. So this is one of the correct option because you have to choose which names are not correct, right? Then the second one, Na3 outside coordination sphere, do this is counter metal ion. Then inside coordination sphere, you have aluminum attached to three oxalato ligand. And oxalato ligand is bidented. That means three C2O4 means total six coordination sites. And how uh, we are, uh, that is the names, name is given here. It is saying that trisodium. But remember, when we write the counter ion names, whether it is anion or cation, whatever, we never mention the number of it. So for example, if you consider the first one, you simply say bromide. You should not say dibromide. Here also, it is not that it is trisodium. You have to simply write sodium. But instead of the part, there is actually no problem. Trioxalate aluminate. Aluminium is part of the negative uh, anionic part. It is present in anionic part. So that is why you have to end it with it. It also has oxidation state plus three. Because for aluminium, it is um, natural that it will have plus three. But even if you do not consider that fact from this uh, charge of the complex also, you can understand. C2O4, three. C2O4, that means total negative charge minus 6. Outside you have Na3. That means here negative charge outside the coordination sphere must be 3 minus. So 3 negative charge extra. That is possible only if aluminium is having plus 3. So it has oxidation state plus 3. Now this name is also not correct. So that will also be one of the correct option. Option C. Sodium 2, counter ion, then nickel. 1 EDT. Now sodium it is mentioned it is fine. Disodium is not written so this is correct. Then EDTA its full name is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid sorry tetraacetate but as it is ligand so you have to end the name with acetato ethylene diamine tetraacetato. 
and nickel is part of anionic uh, present in anionic part so that is why nickel eight oxidation state is two that is also correct how you will understand na2 that means negative charge is minus two par edta there is four negative charge two negative charge extra that means oxidation state of nickel must be plus two so this name is actually correct so this is not the correct option and the last one here the problem is cobalt with five ammonia then ono remember it is ambidextrous ligand no2 it can coordinate with metal through oxygen or through nitrogen in this case it is coordinating through oxygen that is why we have not written no2 we have written ono that means it is coordinating with cobalt through oxygen that is why it is written in this way. and sulfate is present outside now ono is having single negative charge sulfate is having two negative so total negative charge is minus 3 so cobalt must be having plus 3 oxidation state that is okay and look at the name it is saying pentaamine nitro but nitro is true only when it is no2 form that is when n is through nitrogen side it is coordinating with metal but that is not in our case so that is why it is not correct it is not nitro it is nitrito then cobalt three or uh, counter ion is sulfate that is also fine so here the problem is in this part that is it is not nitride uh, it is it should be nitrite or not nitro so except c all are basically incorrect the first one actual name should be amine here it is mentioned amino but actually it is amine then aquo then copper two bromide fine then sodium you have to omit this try simply write sodium try oxalate to aluminate three option c is correct so this is not correct option only a b c a b and d these three are correct options and the last one here only problem in this portion that is it should be nitrito it is not nitro rest of the part is correct so here a c and d so a b and d these three are the correct option because their names are not correct for which one of the following ion the color is not because of dd transition color can be generated uh, not just by dd transition it can also be generated by charge transfer in short we say it ct charge transfer and charge transfer it may be metal to ligand and ligand to metal both are possible mostly it is ligand to metal uh, when you will see that metal is having maximum oxidation state so obviously maximum oxidation state means sorry it is highly electron deficient so obviously the charge transfer will be from ligand side towards metal okay now look at this uh, option cro42 minus first you have to understand what is oxidation state of each of this metal chromium it is attached with four oxide and four oxide means each oxygen is carrying minus 2 so 4 into minus 2 charge that is the total negative charge and suppose the oxidation state for chromium is x overall charge is 2 minus so from this you can understand x value is 4 sorry 8 minus 2 so this is plus 6 now chromium when plus 6 it is basically d0 system and why it is so if you write the electronic configuration of chromium in plus 6 state chromium when it is neutral after argon the configuration is 3d 5 4s1 that means if you remove 6 electron now there is no d electron and if no d electron how did the transition is possible so in this particular case the color that is lemon yellow color that you are seeing that is not because of dd transition but it is because of ligand to metal charge transfer oxide is uh, giving charge towards chromium that is why it is colored so this will be the correct option but we will also see why the other options are not correct in the second option copper is having oxidation state plus 2 that means copper when plus 2 it has configuration 3d9 now 3d9 means it will have unpaired electron in d so that is why dd transition possible 
The next one is iron. Here oxidation state is plus 2 because outside coordination sphere it is sorry 2 plus and that 2 plus charge is balanced by 2 negative charge of sulfur. Now Fe2. Fe when it is neutral it is having configuration after argon 3d6 4s2. That means when it is plus 2 state it will have configuration 3d6 and 3d6 means here also unpaired electrons are present and DD transition possible. And the last one is titanium 3 plus with water ligand. Water is neutral. Now titanium when it is neutral, it will have configuration after argon 3D to 4S2. That means when it is in 3 plus oxidation state. Now there will be one single electron in D, 3D. So DD transition possible. So except the first one in all cases as there is DD transition possible. So color is obviously because of DD transition only in first case it is not because of DD transition. Fine. Here we have a problem. The metal complex having composition 1 chromium 4 ammonia 2 chlorine 1 bromine has been isolated in two forms. So same molecular formula, but it is having two forms. One is B, one is A. The form A reacts with AgNO3. Form A reacts with AgNO3. That means in presence of Ag+, what it does, it gives white PPT. Now this white PPT readily soluble in dilute aqueous ammonia. So dilute aqueous ammonia means dilute NH4OH, aqueous solution of ammonia NH4OH. It is soluble. So whenever you are getting this type of question, if you write the scheme, it will help you to understand the question easily. But in case of B, when it is treated with AgNO3, that is Ag plus ion, now also PPT is there. But this PPT is not white. This PPT is pale yellow. So obviously E and B, these two are not same. And it is soluble not in dilute ammonia. It is soluble in concentrated ammonia. That means their properties are obviously not same. Now in presence of silver, we know that halide ions, they form some precipitate. And depending on what type of halide ion you have, precipitate color is different and also the solubility of the precipitate, that is also different, depending on whether it is AgCl or AgBr or AgI. So in the first case, that is if you look at the formula, there is, that is ammonia, it will always be inside the coordination sphere. Total number of ligands, 4, 2, 1, that means 7. That means outside the coordination sphere, there will be one halide present, Ammonia cannot be present outside the coordination sphere. Only Cl minus or Br minus can be present. And the anion which is present outside the coordination sphere, only that halide can react with Ag plus and it can form some precipitate like AgX. Now, if AgX is AgCl, that means X is Cl and AgCl is basically white. It is easily soluble in dilute nh 4 But when it is Br, now the precipitate will be AgBr and it is not soluble in dilute NH4OH. For this, for its solubility, you have to provide concentrated ammonia. So their behavior is different. So from all this observation, it is clear that in one isomer, that is in A isomer, Cl must be outside the coordination sphere. In the second isomer B, Br should be outside the coordination sphere. So once we know the formula, the first question is saying that write the formula for A and B. So that is clear. Only the first question, once you can understand, rest of the two, you can do it easily. Here, isomer A. See, Cl is outside because AgCl precipitate is formed. But in case of B, AgBr will be the precipitate, which is having slight yellowish color. So answer uh, question A is fine. Then B, hybridization. In both cases, 
it is coordination number six and chromium is having oxidation state plus three because you have total three uh, negative charge two chloride one bromide now chromium when it is neutral it is 3d5 4s1 so when it is losing three electrons now it will be 3d3 that means 2d orbitals are vacant one two three these two are vacant so d2sp3 possible in both cases because chromium having same oxidation state so answer question b its answer is also same for both and the last one is saying that calculate magnetic moment now as it is three unpaired electron n value is three so for both this complex magnetic moment value from this formula that will also be same only the first uh, their formula is different otherwise rest of the things are same fine which of the following can show both geometrical and optical isomerism cobalt it is associated with three oxalate that means here metal is attached to it three symmetrical bidentate ligand like this whatever is the charge that is not so much important now the second one is m a4 b2 option c is m a b c d e f that means all the six ligands are different and the last one is m three monodentate ligand ammonia three another monodentate ligand m a three b three now suppose if you are lacking in time you can easily choose that option c will be correct because only in option c the complex you can see it is having so much that is there is nothing similar all the ligands are different so when all the ligands are different the chance of getting different types of isomerism, both geometrical and optical, that is also high. So this much information is enough to choose the right option. A, A, B, C, D, E, F. And remember, based on this formula, discussion we have already seen in the isomer, uh, when we have discussed isomerism of formation compounds. So when there are six different ligands, basically 15 geometrical isomers are possible. It is not that C strands because C strands are not possible, but they are depending on different arrangement, 15 geometrical arrangement possible. So 15 geometrical isomerism uh, possible and each of these geometrical isomerism is uh, optically active. So it will have its pair. So when you consider optical isomerism, it is basically total 30. That is considering the energy humor. So both geometrical isomerism and optical isomerism, both is possible here. So that is why this will be the correct option okay and uh, also if you consider the other formulas m a 4 b 2 here cis trans isomerism is possible but both cis and trans um, they are basically they will not show optical activity so option b it is actually showing only gi and in case of first you will see it will show only optical isomerism but geometrical isomerism here not possible okay it is bidentate symmetrical ligand and in case of d here facial and meridional isomer is possible so gi is possible but each of these isomer they are uh, because of symmetry element presence of symmetry element they are not optically kept so except c in the other three cases you are getting either optical isomerism or geometrical isomerism but not both together it is possible only in c okay so that is why c will be the correct option so we are ending the session here thank you for listening